Hello everyone. Welcome back to Baby Bunting Reborn Nursery. Um, it is, let me think, it is Tuesday early afternoon. It's just about half past 12 and it's a little bit grey outside but it's still quite warm. So I thought I would like to come back and say hello to everyone and show you what the babies are wearing today. This is my favourite kind of outfit on them. I love to see their little legs and I love their pants to look like, you know, big kind of interesting bloomers. So they're sort of wearing a bit of a hodgepodge of things. They've got bits and pieces from all over the place. So their little, they're little um, bloomer things, bloomer nappy cover pants are really just things I've picked up around the place. I like to go looking and when I see something on sale, I buy it. And then later I put it into an outfit. Their little shirts are the beautiful ones that um, Annie from Ann Walker bought me from, well, she ordered them for me from a Spanish shop. And their little cardies I, I have bought here. They haven't used them yet. This is the first time they've worn their little cardies. So they really are just wearing a mixture of stuff. Underneath they've still got their lovely little vests and nappy covers on, which I really just leave on them all the time because I love them. And they've both got their little bald heads. I did put bonnets out, but I just really love their heads. As you know, I'm a bit crazy about that. So I thought I'd just leave them like that and show you. And they've got their little sheep who's just sort of resting on their legs, one leg each, so they both feel included. So that's the babies for today. I hope you like what they're wearing. I have something else to show you, and that's something that um, Anne from... Is it, I think it's she, her nursery name is Once Upon a Cloud. She has she showed just a couple of days ago a video of her absolutely beautiful baby girl called hmm, Betsy. That's right, called Betsy. She is actually the Maisie sculpt, and she's really really gorgeous. And in some of the photos, she was holding a a beautiful old vintage rattle, which reminded me of my small rattle collection. I do have a few collections like that because I find I get a bit hooked on something. So, you know, for some reason I get interested in, say, rattles and then I look up rattles in eBay and start buying rattles. So I, um, I have a few. I've only bought the silver ones to show you today because the others are uh, all sorts of things, you know, like beads and plastic and... Um, fabric, just all a mixture of things, things that caught my eye and I've bought over, you know, it takes me ages to gather these kind of collections, but that's what I do, I'm, I'm a bit like that. So let me show you, I want to show you one by one what I've got, and then at the end I'll show you my two really special ones, I'll keep them for the very end. So I'll show you this one first, this is um, a silver, I'll show you the whole thing, there it is. He's a Humpty Dumpty and he's got little bells on him that tinkle. I think there's three bells or two bells. No, three bells. And that's one of his faces and you turn him round and that's his other face. It's exactly the same. And to me he looks pretty scary. If I was a baby I'd be a bit scared to hold this and play with it. But there you are. He's very old. He may even be antique. He may be over 100 years old but I'm not too sure about his exact age. He's got, you can see the patina on him, he hasn't been polished up and cleaned up. And it's actually the handle down here where, where I'm holding is really solid, so the whole thing's quite heavy. You wouldn't want to give it to a little baby because they would just keep clunking themselves on the head with it. Um, and I don't know exactly what they would do. It might be better for a bigger baby, maybe a mm, few, few months or maybe even six months or more, you know, once they get a bit... Uh, better hand control. So that's him, bit spooky guy he is. I'll put him down and get the next one. And this is it. This one's a real sweet one. This one's sort of been polished up. It's got a beautiful mother of pearl handle. It's still got the little bells. I'll tingle them for you. But it also has a whistle on it. Very strange. I don't know why baby wants a whistle, but there you go. This one has a whistle. And the little jingle bells on the sides. It's it's very, it's very smaller than that big scary um, 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 what did I say? Humpty Dumpty 
and it's much, much lighter. And I think probably the baby could chew on this handle here. But it's very sweet. I'll just show you the other side. That's the back of it. It's lovely and it's been polished up. This is how I bought it, all shiny and polished. So that's quite an old one too. I don't know if it's antique or, you know, if it's over 100 years old or if it's just vintage over 25 years old. Well, I know it's way over 25 years old. Whether or not it's actually reached antique status, I don't know, but it's kind of not relevant because I just like it for what it is. So that's the second one. Now this one is a more modern one, but it's um, in an old style. I think it's actually a Tiffany one. It needs a bit of a polish. It's a, like the man in the moon and the baby can hold the handle on this side and just shake it and chew it. And this is quite light too. This is not a hard one for a baby to hold. It's very cute and it's got little tiny something inside that rattles. You can just hear it, I think. So that's a nice one as well, but that's a modern one. Um, so I'll put that down and get the next one. This one is a fairly standard one that you've probably seen. Um, it's it's old um, and it's got this lovely sweet blue ring on it, which I guess you could use as a tea, the baby could use it as a teething ring. And the bottom part, let me just have a look at that. It's it, this one hasn't been engraved, but you can engrave. Um, let me just have a look. I have got my glasses on, but I can't tell you that's helping a great deal. So it's got a space where you can put the pounds and ounces that the baby weighed, the month and the year that it was born. And so that could be engraved on there. Let me have a look at the other side. I guess that's plain. Sorry, that's not focusing. Let me just move a bit back. That's um, plain on the back, so I guess you could put the baby's name um, on the back, get that engraved. So that's that sweet little one. That's cute. These are usually in my doll room, and there's, I've got a doll holding each of them. It's going to be quite tricky to remember who holds what, but I guess they can hold different ones when they go back. Now this is a little sweet little, I guess he's a bear, with little pointy ears and a sort of pointy face. I'll turn him so you can see. And it's on a, I don't know if it's actual bone, that ring, or faux bone, if you, if there is such a thing. Um, but it's a really cute one. Let me see if it, yeah, it has a little rattle too. I hope you can hear it. You could hear it better if I shut up, couldn't you? There we go. So that's a very sweet one. He doesn't have anything engraved on him. I'll show you the back of him. There he is. He's a sweet one too. He actually is held normally by my big, I've got uh, a big F&B Bubbles doll. I've got many Bubbles dolls, but my biggest one holds that rattle. And this almost last one, except for my two favourites, is a very sweet little one. And a nice rattle and a nice mother of pearl handle again. Easy to hold and chew. And on this side, and it's a bit dented, you can see, I think the baby would have chewed this, with a baby with some teeth. So on this side, you, you probably can't see, luckily I can. It's got 7-26-17. So I assume the baby was born on the 26th of July, 1917. So that's her birth date. And on the other side, it's got Edna... Leon, Leone, I think it is. Let me just have another look. Something like that. That's her name. So that's when she was born in 1917. So that's almost an antique. I'll just show you the whole thing again and give a little rattle. So that's a really cute one. So all of those ones I've showed you until now have been for real babies. The next two are my favourites and these are the same thing but just scaled right down to doll size. I'll show you, you can see how much smaller that is. Isn't that just gorgeous? That's got the little mother of pearl handle and bells. But it's tiny, absolutely tiny. And on that side it says baby. I don't know if the camera will let you see that. Let me turn around to the other, and there's a little loop there. I guess that would be, maybe you'd thread a, a ribbon through that so the baby wouldn't lose it. And on the back it says baby as well. 
but there's no little loop on that side. Well, this is probably the front, not the back. There's no loop there. It says baby and a little star above the word baby. Let's see if there's a star on the back. Yeah, there's a little star on the back too. And that's just really sweet, that one. Let me, I'll put it near the baby so you can get a better idea of its size. I'll see if I can get it into Pippa's hand. She doesn't want to hold it. So let me just tuck it here on her jumper. So that's that cute little baby one. And then the other baby one I've got is this one, which I adore this one. And I think that is a bone handle. Well, I would say it is a bone handle. You can see the little, or ivory maybe. Yeah, maybe even ivory. It's got little patterns cut into the bottom. Oh, come on camera. Why don't you let people see these things? And it's very little as well. It's got a beautiful rattle. So this is just a doll one. And I think I just love the two doll ones. Let me see if she will hold this one. Let's put her arm up a bit. No, you don't want to, darling. You don't have to. There we go. Look at that. She's holding that. So you can see really how tiny it is. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing those. I'll leave them there for you to look at. Actually, we should give Jonty one to hold as well because that's not very fair if Pippa's got two and he's got none. There you are, my darling. You have that. You can play with it when you finish sucking your thumb, okay? That's my boy. So there you are. There's the rattles. And while I'm here, I thought I might like to just talk about something that I saw in a, a video this morning that Pickles and Tea did. And it was about... Um, custom orders. You know, I'm a reborn artist. That um, these are two for the first two babies I've kept that I've made. I've made oh, I don't know how many dolls I've made and sold, um, but these are the first two I I've kept. Um, and so I've done custom orders. And Pickles and Tea was talking about how she has some rules with her custom orders, and she actually doesn't call them custom orders because she says if you don't like my work don't order from me and if you do want one of my dolls I will make one for you um, I won't be at, she said she doesn't send progress pictures because she says what can you see it's not a lot to see no you can't tell the changes um, she doesn't want to be bothered too much by the customer while she's making them she just wants to sit and create produce the baby and then send it so I, that got me start, and that's just an abbreviation as well of what she said. If you want to have a look at her, at her opinions, why don't you go and have a look at her video? It's very, very good. I um, actually agreed with virtually everything she said because I find it, when I have a custom order, I actually find it very stressful and it takes the pleasure out of creating the babies for me because of the, um, you know, you have to do it within a certain time frame and it's not necessarily the way that I would like to make a baby. And I, when I sit down to do these dolls, I like to, for a start, I don't just sit down if I've just only got sort of half an hour or an hour in between things to, to fill. I like to know I've got many hours when I can just sit there, take my time, work on the doll the way the doll kind of asks me to in a way. It's like when you look at a kit, you sort of, get an idea of how you would like it to be, what sort of age you would like it to look, whether it should be very pink or very pale or very whatever, you know, how much modelling, how many different colours, different layers you want to use. So when someone wants a custom order and they give you specifics, it, it kind of takes the creativity out of it. And for me, that's the pleasure of making these babies, aside from... I just love the end result, of course, of producing a, a doll that looks like a baby and feels like a baby. That's the pleasure of the whole process. So for me, it's, you know, I'm not really keen on doing customs. I will do them if I, you know, if I really need to. Um, but if I have a, had a choice, I don't think I would ever do a custom. I much prefer to work on a kit that I love and to make it the way I want it to look. And then if someone enjoys the same things I do, I'd like them to buy the doll. It, you know, it's hard if someone 
has an idea in their head how they want a doll to look because it's very hard to explain, you know, how much modelling you want because, like, um, heavy modelling might be one thing in someone's mind and quite different in my mind and trying to produce exactly what they want is so hard and so I think it kind of opens things up for disappointment. I think it's great if someone already knows your work and says please create me say such and such a kit and um, and you get to still do it your way and just with making you know smaller tweaks that the person would like you know color hair or color eyes that kind of thing or um, how dark they'd like the skin um, then I think it's a bit better it still leaves you lots of room to produce the doll how you want to um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on custom orders and it actually led me to another thought and this is this makes me sound like I'm really vain and horrible but it's really the truth and that is that I don't think I want to collect a doll from another artist because I think I make the dolls the way I like them for myself. But doesn't that sound horrible? Because I, I really admire other artists' work. There's some beautiful, imaginative, creative people out there there, there really are people who are more talented, way more talented than I am, I'm sure. But the thing is, I like to make the dolls the way I like them. I like them to look super real and um, super cuddly and floppy. And so I just, I don't think I would like, well, at this stage, I just can't imagine wanting to buy a doll from another artist. I think I would look at it and, and straight away think, oh, no, I don't like those fingernails or, oh, I don't like that the way the skin feels or oh no the I you know all that kind of nonsense I think that's what I would do and that does make me sound horrible I don't think I'm horrible but maybe I am I don't know it just it's just how I feel about about my own work I do like it and I don't mean to sound so um what's the word you know the word I'm looking for full of myself and um yeah, anyway, that sounds pretty awful. But I think that's true at the moment. That's how I feel about things now. So um, I think that might be all for today. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that I would like to um, read a, a children's story to you next time I come on. Um, Love Me Some Reborn Babies, I think that's the name of her channel, um, came on a few days ago with and read a book by an author who had just passed away. It was actually her favourite author. And she suggested that it would be lovely if we could read a book to a child. Now, I'm not a child anymore, that's quite obvious. I'm a grown-up, but I still love hearing people read books. I'm not so keen on very simplistic baby books. I like books with a story. And here in my house I have most of the books that I had as a child I've kept them all and books that my children loved I've kept them all too one of my daughters in particular um, went through them she loves and made sure that we kept all the important ones so I have about I can't say one favorite because I've probably got about oh I think five favorites so some of them are classics that you would all know things like um, I think it's called the red balloon and Madeline and um, some others that you wouldn't know My Donkey Benjamin is beautiful and one that I'd love to read you at Easter is called The Country Bunny and the Little Gold Shoes that is just a oh, beautiful story now each of these books always makes me cry a bit um, because there are some very very gorgeous bits in there but the one that I would like to read you next time is called Tony's Hard Work Day and it's a, a beautiful book. It was my youngest son's favourite story because being the youngest, you know, everybody was smarter and bigger than him, he thought. And that's a little bit what this story is about. It's about a little boy who um, wants to help his parents and his brothers. And I think he's got a sister. I have to really look at that. And everyone says, hop out of the way, Tony. If You know, you'll just get in the way. Hurt yourself and cry and blah, blah, blah. And then Tony proves them all wrong by, by doing a magnificent thing. So that's what the story is about in a nutshell. Um, 
I would love to read that to you next time. It's not for little tiny children, it's for maybe um, sort of three or four or five year olds, sort of that kind of level, but I think you would enjoy it. I hope you would, because I do. So I might come on and do that next time. So until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been lovely to be with you. So thanks very much for coming over to my house again and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.